YouTube, my name is Tom Mizzle. You're watching my channel, Mizzle 14, and I'm here doing a review of the Haves and Haves Nots, Season 7, Episode 18, Sugar Mama. So I'm just gonna get the short scene out the way between Landon and Charles. Charles told Landon that he wants to move to Savannah for his inauguration. He said he decided to move there instead of living in um, Detroit. And Landon said that's not a good idea. It's a bad move to do that. And basically, Charles want to do this because of Candace. He likes Candace. He want to be around her. I don't know why he's so obsessed with Candace. But he said he want to be next to her. So he said he want to see if he can make it work by moving to Savannah. And also set up a meeting to see Candace. And Landis like, okay, I'm going to try to do that. So in the midst of that, after they made that agreement, and then they went to go freaking untie his shoes and Charles did not say he said what you doing he said I'm trying to help you he said I can do my own shoes he said sir like when you go president and everything everybody gonna be falling for you like hands and knees and bringing their backs to serve you and he's like that and then there's a praise to him and say he's gonna be great he's gonna be a good president and um I guess they decided they decided he wanted to drink cause last time he tried to get Charles drunk so he could move push on him but that was not happening. And Charles said, no, I'm not doing it. And Charles asked us, did you even get the feel about a girl that you love so much and you can't get out of your head? And he said, no. And I said, Charles, as long as you know that man don't like girls, he like you. He wants to he wanna jump on your pole, but he can't do that. He trying to save himself, but he loves you, but you don't know that. So he said, he's not trying to drink. So Landon just left and he said, okay. So let's go go back to that little bit um Guinness and we'll talk a bit of stuff out the way. So God ended um started with the end of last season, um last episode where this guy and Billy was tasseling with the gun and each other and it started off and the guns um the guy did several shots, it was missing everything. Finally Benny pushed the guy, he fell to the ground and he got the gun. He pointed at him. He said, okay, okay, okay. He said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, I didn't do it. Showed the gun. He said, I believe I believe you. And Benny freaked out. So he put the gun on the table. He said, I didn't do it. And it left out. Ran out. So in the midst of it, I think he called Mitch. So Mitch was waiting for Benny at the house. Benny drove down. He saw Mitch. And Mitch was waiting outside. He said, what's going on? He said, you called me. I was doing something. Tell me. So this is the time that Benny decided to tell Mitch after uh, several times trying to get him to say it, told Mitch that his uncle Vinny died and he told him that he was going to go back to the place to give the money back. And when he went there, he found out his he saw a body there and it was his uncle. Mitch is pissed off and he was like, did you do this? You lying to me and this and that? And Benny said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But Mr. didn't want to hear it. He was pissed. He said, I told you not to do this. I told you not to get the money from my uncle. I told you not to do all this stuff. Through the midst of that, as Mitch was great, yelling at Benny, and Benny was trying to go back and say, yo, so I ain't doing this. I ain't doing this. Hannah was in the bedroom, and she heard, overheard the conversation. So she was waking up. So Mitch left, pissed off. I guess he wanted to go see about his uncle. And... Hannah, he went, Benny went inside. So when he went inside, Hannah said, what's going on? What's going on? Tell me. Benny wanted to tell her. And then after a while, Benny told Hannah that the same story going to happen. He wanted to try to get the money back. She realized that the money that he had was money that it was involved. And he said he wanted to get the money back. He wanted to borrow the money from the truck. She said it was a loan. Why you worry about giving the money back? And he said, Barbara, he didn't need it. He bought him for um, a mafia, a mob guy. And when he went there, the guy's dead. And Hannah's freaking out. And said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you need to get a lawyer. And he said, he's going to ask Veronica. Hannah didn't want to do that. He said, no, no, no. I'm going to talk to Catherine. He said, no, I'm going to talk to Veronica. And she said, no, do this. No, no, I'm going to help you. He saw a hell bent trying to go to Veronica. He said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You can't tell me. You can't stop me. So he left and went to Veronica. To the midst of that, he went to Veronica's house, banging on Veronica's door, knocking, knocking, knocking. She said, oh, it's in this and that. And this is the meantime, 
Meantime, she had R.K. there, but I will talk about that later. And she went to the door. Billy came and he said he needed to talk to her. He needed to talk to her private. She sent R.K. upstairs. They were talking. And she asked for an apology. She said, you're going to apologize to me. He said, I need a lawyer. I need your help. She said, oh, are you trying to come back to my help? You got some nerve coming down here. He said, he need her help. He needs a lawyer. She said, you got to apologize for fucking Melissa in my damn couch disrespecting me. He apologized. Uh, she said, oh, you apologize. Just, um, you apologize. Just apologize. Just get over it. Or you apologize because you need help. He said, he apologized because he really made it. He does need the help. And she asked him two questions. She asked him, did any police involved came around, came to the place, seen you? He said, no. Was there any surveillance cameras that saw you? He said, no. She said, then you can go home. He said, that's it, go home? He said, yeah, go home. She said, oh, you can do one thing for me. You can get naked. You get undressed. And he said, what? And do that. And you know, Veronica, a horny ass. She already tipsy or drunk, so she already had R.K. there. She said she could get two for one deal. Get R.K. and Benny, have a fucking threesome. I said, go ahead, Veronica. Go ahead, bitch. Get your cool back. And, but she said, um, go home. And nothing you have to do about it. We can work on this later. He went home. But she said, well, you can thank me. You got no manners. You can thank me for trying to help you all that stuff. And he thanked you, thank her, and left. That's a that's it for Benny, right? So later on, later on, then we get RK, right? Candles walking down the um, hallway to the hotel. RK sneak up on her, and he said, "What you don't be sneaking up on me? What the hell are you trying to do? You get you get slapped or sneaking up on me?" But um, RK, he came in. He said he told Candace that Rocky snitched on her. And told Oscar what she did. And she was okay. And then he came about. He was trying to make a move so Candy. He said, You need to show me what you work with. I need to see what the um hype is about. You need to show me. Tell show me how you work. Show me show me the thing how to work a woman, to please a woman better, all that stuff. And he said, Why you just don't go downstairs to the bar to get the old woman soon to help you? He said, No, I want you. Tell me what you work with. So she asked him, can I see what you um got? He showed her. She said, uh, next time. You're too young for me. I said, oh, Candace, you did too much, bitch. But um, she said, you know what? I got somebody to go send you to. It's an old lady. It's a nice. She's good. She rich. She got money. You could go to the south. I see the address. He said, you better not send me some old guys. She said, no, no, no. She's good. She's good. You be having a good time. Have sex with her, do whatever you gotta do, but make her happy. So that's what he sent her. Candace sent RK to Veronica's house. So um, he was knocking on the door. Veronica answered the door. She's, as you know, Veronica's still drunk. She got turned down from Derek. She was gonna get some dick for him, but he turned her down. So she's there and still drunk. Somebody knocked on the door. He came in all freaking proud and confident. I said, bitch, how you just gonna walk in the house? Walked in the house with no problem, being forceful, said, oh, it's a nice place. Came down here, Candace um, sent me. Oh, she said, Candace? Candace sent you? They said, oh, it's a young, young one to me. I said, I can't deal with you, boy. They were like, you are so young. You so young boy. I can't deal with young boys. And took her drink, drink the drink, because he wanted to drink. I said, damn, RK, you try to show it. And he asked, he said he was 25, and said he was 25, and was doing this, and she was buttoned up his coat. She said, what you doing? What you doing? I guess, I think he buttoned up his shirt, and then he showed his junk, or he just buttoned up his shirt. And she saw his body, she said, ooh. Please, I think it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I said, go ahead, Veronica. Shit, sure, you get dick for a while. You mind, I, mind get the young one. You know, the young one will blow your back out, girl. Betty was doing the right thing, so you better get him for long care as well. So, so, um, so Veronica told him that she's divorced. And he said, oh, you're divorced? 
And RK thought that Veronica is living large because her ex-husband, like her ex-husband passed away or died. And he gave all his money, so she good. She said, no, I did everything to myself. And he said, where he from, Ohio, things like that don't happen. Women get kept from the man, so they take care of them. And she said, no, I'm an independent woman. I do what I did for myself. So in his mind, he was like, he's ching Like he said, oh, this girl got, this woman got money. I can get her. Because the RK1, he's, he's down to that little ring. He can find out he can get him a rich woman. Because that's what Veronica... No. Candace told RK when she told him she was done with them and gave him advice. The advice was to get an older woman and please them who's desperate, lonely, who has money, and you can work with them and you get the, you can get rich through them. So I guess that's what he's going to do. So when Benny came to the house and he's wanted to talk to Veronica by himself, she, RK said, oh, this is not cute to leave. She said, cute to leave? No, you can go upstairs. So the minister goes upstairs, Veronica took RK, kissed him deeply, fiercely kissed him fierce. And it was like, oh, right in front of Benny. I guess Benny would see that. So took him upstairs. So Veronica, um, no, RK went upstairs and he went um, in Veronica's room was going through her stuff, going her drawers, see the jewelry, and during the midst of seeing the different jewelry, he was like pocketing her jewelry, like he was going to pawn it and get some money out of it. I was like, oh, okay. Went in the closet, got some more stuff. He would try to open a safe that there, try to get the combo, look at the com, listening to the thing, and he said, I guess he was going to come back to that later after he think he could work the vault and get the code so he get that freaking safe. And then he sat in the bag, he said, oh, he said he would get this bitch all her money. So basically, RK feel like he hit the bank and he gonna try Veronica. But I said, let you know, um, RK, Veronica is not the one to mess with. I mean, she's drunk and vulnerable now, but when she find out you try to play her, you better be careful. I'm telling you that now. So then, sorry, look at my notes. Jim, right? So Jim met with, um, Oscar and they talk and so Oscar told Jim that the money was taken by Candace and Jim said how Candace got the money and he said he got drugged by Candace and Jim said you know what you got 24 hours to get my money because Jim was over it he said he got because he was over it because Candace fucked him over before and now he feel that like, now he hear that Candace is doing this again. So he is so done and pissed off of Candace. So he said, Oscar, you got 24 hours. He said, 24 hours? I can't get that money in 24 hours. So if you don't get the 20 money for 24 hours, you are dead. You ain't Candace. And then through the midst of it, Jim was talking to Oscar. Oscar got on both. He said, get your hands off of me. And Jim said, <laughs> get your hands off of me. You're funny. 24 hours or I'll kill your ass. And he said, get your hands off of me, boy. You, you are too good. Oh, well. I see that when they care. So later on, Jim was still pissed off. He went to Derek, David house. David and Erica was sitting on, laid in the bed. No, door was knocking. Somebody was banging on the door, banging on the door. And thinking David was saying, what's going on? He think, if David thinking it's Veronica, he said, oh, shit, it's too much. Gotta stop this. But it wasn't Veronica. It was Jim. Jim walks in. He said, this bitch took my money. This bitch took my money. And David said, what's going on? And Erica came down and said, what's going on? And he said, oh, you got some hoe in here. And he said, oh, she's not a hoe. And he apologized to Erica. She went upstairs. And they was having a conversation. Jim told, Jim told David what happened. He said, Oscar told me that Candace took the money. And I don't believe him. He said that Candace, he said, how did Candace get money? He said, he said, he come up with a bullshit story that he was drugged and she took the account. And David said, um, Oscar is clean and Oscar is lying. No, Oscar is good. He said, believe him. I trust him. I believe his story. He said, how you going to see he was a con artist? And once a con artist, always going to be a con artist. And I don't believe him. I think he worked with Candace and uh, took all my son's money. Remember, that's why his money that Candace all took. And that Jim was gonna take Wyatt's money in the first place. And but Candace got it now. So um during the mis during that time, Erica was upstairs calling Candace. And you know Candace don't want to deal with Erica because she felt like Candace 
plagued her about what war and tried to set her up, got her killed. So, um, Elka was calling Veronica. Veronica cut that short. So, um, not Veronica, Candace cut that conversation short and said, No, I don't want to hear it click, all that stuff. And then more conversation going. And they was like, What's going on? So, as Jim was explaining more, Jim said it was a quiet a foundation, fine quiet account. And he said, What? Then who do you think who had that account? And they all say Lloyd. So they called Lloyd, Jim called Lloyd, and Lloyd was sound like he was asleep and got up and Jim was not having it. He said, Get your ass up, show this account, I'm gonna ask his questions and answer me. So in the midst of it, Jim found out that Veronica opened an account. And the Cryer's count name, and they said Veronica, what Veronica had to do with that? And then it was a Veronica, Candace, oh Lord. And then he found out that Candace Young is the one that took the money, that held, oh, the, uh, put the money in the account, took the money and put that account. And then he found out that Benny is the one that's holding the account because it's opening a personal account. And he was like, what? He said, it's crazy. And, um, through the midst of that, Erica called Veronica uh, Candace again. And Candace said, What? If you call me one more time, don't see if I can get up there. She always want to threat somebody. Like, Candace, you're not threatening nobody. You always want to threat someone. And Erica told uh, Candace that he found out about the count, he found out about the um, money, and he would tell her, and she didn't want to hear at first because you said you set me up. No, I want to deal with you. She said, I'm trying to tell her, trying to help you, get in your good graces. And I guess that's what Veronica uh, Candace said, tell me what they're saying. And I guess Erica was telling her things. So Jim later on went to Catherine. So in the meantime, Catherine was talking to Hannah, right? Catherine, Hannah came to the house and said, because Hannah wanted to get Catherine help to help her son, Benny. But Benny already went to Veronica. So, um, but Hannah doesn't know that yet. But no, Benny told Hannah that he's going to go to Veronica anyway, so he rushed to go see her. Now, in the panic, she went to go see Catherine and said, I need your help, I need a lawyer. And Catherine said, what happened? And then this was, um, Hannah was telling Catherine about that my son went to this place, he was trying to get money back, it was a mobster, and the guy was already dead. And Catherine was like, oh my gosh, what has happened? She told the address what happened, and Veronica was shocked, because Veronica knew that her son, Wyatt, is the one that killed the mobster, but she didn't want to tell Hannah that. But she said, oh my God, I want to help you, I want to help you. And she said, I will call somebody in the morning, and he'll go call you. And Hannah would say that he was trying to get that devil with Veronica. And Hannah, uh, Catherine was like, um, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. So better if you get for Veronica help, they get somebody who don't know you help. And she said, no, I can't stand that bitch. I can't stand that bitch. She said, okay, okay. But she said, Benny is a young, grown guy, and he went to Veronica. There's nothing that she could do. She said, okay, and they hugged it out. That's when Jim came and was like, what's going on? What about her son? Her son. And Catherine told us lie that he had a DOI. And he was arrested, then all that stuff. Jim said he's in jail, and she's trying to get the lawyer to help Hannah out to cover up what really happened. And he said, he said, yeah, that's what he had. He said, I need to talk to him. He said, well, you need to talk to him when you get out. So that was that. And then later, the last scene in the episode, right? Jeff went to see Wyatt. I remember Wyatt called Jeff last episode. Last episode, and said, I need to see you. I need to see you. I need to tell you something. Uh, I need to tell you the person. Jeff ain't trying to see him, all that stuff, but he said, All right, well, come. Jeff, in the, Jeffrey, in the meantime, called the people and told the people in the hospital that he's a harm to himself. He's going to commit suicide and he's dangerous, so he need to come. So he went to the White House and he told Wyatt that he called people, they're going to come get you. You better leave voluntarily or they're going to take you, drag you out of here. And Wyatt said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. And that's what Wyatt told Jeffrey that he killed someone. Jeffrey didn't believe him. He said, yeah, yeah, I killed him. He's at the bar and I killed him. On the he said, well, you go to the police. He said, I can't go to the police. I can't go to the police. And he said, no. Through the meantime, 
Justin came in, he said he thought you're okay, he thought why he was screaming at Jeffrey, he thought Justin's crazy. He's why he said, I'll go okay, you can leave, you can leave, you don't need to be here. So during the miss time when Wyatt was giving him the fines was telling him no, no, no. Jeffrey called the phone, he said, I need you to come up here and get him. To the miss time, the gay guys got upstairs, took Wyatt, Wyatt was struggling against him, was fighting doors like he done strong. Crack scared person in the system, the drug, and he was fighting, 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 and finally got away. So Justin and Jeffrey talking, and Jeffrey said, I don't want to see you, I don't want to see you again, we don't need to see each other. And what he said that, he said, it's a sick to look at you, and just said, we will be bound together. And then um, he said, he don't care. So Justin said, word. Put up two guns, put one in his head, one in Jeffrey's head, and he said, if I can't have you, nobody will. I said, oh, Jeffrey, you better be careful, because that nigga is no, he got nothing to lose. He lost everything. His family, his wife, his kids, he don't have access to family. He lost everything, so he got nothing to lose by killing y'all both of y'all there. And that's how the episode ended. So, I can't wait till next week and see what's going on, what happened, see how all can go work for Monica. And all that stuff, and how Benny will get himself out of the situation, how Jeffrey will get himself out of the situation, see if he don't kill them both, but that was the episode, hope y'all like it, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, also please share my channel if you need to show it to anyone so they can subscribe, remember to subscribe, it's the red button down below, please click that button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.